What's up guys, today we're going to be taking a look at one of my most highly requested subwoofers, the Shoe Research VTF15H Mark II. Before we get this thing unboxed, if you are new to the channel and love audio and video gear and new movies, then tap the subscribe button for new weekly videos. Alright, let's see what's in the box. Inside, we get the unpacking instructions. Here we have some documentation, an accessories box containing the power cable, and a test CD. This is a nice touch, it's got some thick rubber feet, kind of like those ones you can buy for the SVS subs. The 15H Mark II is a ported subwoofer with triangular ports. It comes with removable foam plugs if you want to use it sealed. Frequency response with one port open goes down to 16 Hz. Both ports open is 21 Hz. And having both sealed, it'll go down to 22 Hz. It's got a 15 inch driver powered by a 600 watt RMS amp with peaks up to 2000 watts. It measures 25 inches high by 18 inches wide by 28 and a half inches deep and it weighs a hefty 110 pounds. Around back are high level inputs, two XLR ins, unbalanced RCAs, the volume control, a 0 to 180 degree phase toggle, the EQ toggle, an adjustable Q control, an adjustable crossover, the crossover bypass switch, and the auto power on switch. For setup, I'll be hooking this up to a Trino of Altitude 16, a Zipidi media player, and an 11 channel Arendel sound speaker setup. You can find links to all those reviews in the video's description. Now if you want to get the cleanest signal over to the sub, it's recommended that you use the XLR inputs, especially if the subwoofer is going to be a long distance away from the processor. If you don't have XLRs on your AVR or Pre-Pro, then just use the RCAs. For testing, I'll be turning off any room correction so I can hear exactly how it sounds using only the subwoofer's adjustments. Since we focus mainly on home theater here on the channel, I did all my listening using movies. Probably one of the most bass heavy movies to come out this year would be Midway on 4K Blu-ray. If we go ahead and skip to chapter 2 during the first attack, you'll be greeted with some of the deepest bass response. It pulses and just drones on for a good couple minutes. The VTF, from what I can hear, produces an incredible amount of low energy bass. I've had some expensive subs that are about twice the cost of this one, and this one just smokes them for sheer LFE. I'm talking scary wall shaking bass. Not only does it have that deep low presence, but it does a great job of hitting those mid bass gunshots during the aerial attack. Since we're talking about gunshots, my next go-to is Fury in Dolby Atmos. A capable sub should hit those tank blasts real hard and make you feel it in your body. This sub definitely hits hard, but it's not as quick as the REL 1508 that I had in here recently. It's a sealed subwoofer and one of the fastest and tightest ones I've had a chance to review. The VTF15 for sure slams hard, but it does tend to linger a bit after every shot. I went and plugged up both ports and dialed in the Q, which did help to tighten things up. You'll get a more tactile feel while still getting a taste of that deep low end. For me personally though, I'd probably just stick to one open port for that extra low end extension. Next up is that crazy eyeball scene from Blade Runner 2049. This one builds up to a sustained peak around 35 hertz and hangs for a few seconds. It's kind of like that scene from Midway. I've 
always got to end these demos with the intro to Edge of Tomorrow. There's some killer infrasonics here, so not every subwoofer can do this part justice. You should feel the air move around you towards the end of this clip before you hear any kind of bass. Alright, so the VTF isn't hitting those ultra low, low notes. If you've never heard this demo with a larger subwoofer, then you probably won't know what you're missing. As reference, my normal subs are a pair of PV16s, which in my room gives me that ultra low energy. The VTF just came up short here, but really not many subwoofers can handle this demo without self-destructing. Now, I did take a couple measurements, with the best settings being one port open, EQ1, and setting the Q at 0.7. I was able to get 101 dB in my room, and there is a little peak around 10 Hz. If I wanted to tighten things up a bit and plug both ports, I got a little less output around 19 Hz, but I prefer the latter option. Depending on your room and the settings that you do, you could get better performance than I did. You know, I'm not sure why people don't talk about these more. It's easily one of my favorite subwoofers now. I get why people have requested this in for review. It's only $900 and it performs as good and if not better than subwoofers costing twice as much. It's got a 15 inch driver so it's gonna give you impressively deep bass. It just won't dig as low as some more expensive options. Looks wise, I'm not the biggest fan and it is pretty imposing looking. So it's not gonna be the easiest thing to hide if it's going in a living room. Looks aside though, it is an impressive sounding sub. It'll give you tight deep bass, but as I mentioned before, I have heard tighter bass, albeit for twice the money. I should also mention that there isn't any kind of app control or room correction, so you'll have to make do with what's built in or use your processor's EQ. So the question is, should you buy the VTF-15 Mark II? I think for the price of many single subs, it's a no-brainer not to grab two of these instead, especially if you want to keep it within an affordable budget. There's of course better sounding subwoofers, but from what I've heard, you will have to drop a lot of extra spare change to get better performance than the 15H Mark II. So tell me your thoughts on the VTF. Have you heard it? And if not, have you considered giving it a try? Leave a comment and let us know. Now if you guys have found this video useful and want to help out the channel, then hit that like button. If you want, you can find us on social media, and if you want to support the channel and get exclusive updates and great discounts on home theater equipment, then stop by our Patreon page. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys again in the next one.